it's me, Trash Puppy, and today I have something a little bit different for you than what I normally do. Um, for the past month or so, I've been working on a new coding project, so we're going to be talking about that. It's a networking command line tool written in Golang, and since I've been having so much fun writing it and learning a lot more than I thought I would, um, I decided to start a series of devlogs. So we're going to start today with the first part in the series, and I'll tell you all about my networking command line tool, which I've decided to call NetPuppy. So what is NetPuppy? NetPuppy is a command line tool used to establish a TCP connection between two peers so they can send data back and forth to one another. And if that doesn't sound very spicy to you, then let me put it to you this way. NetPuppy is basically a clone of NetCat, which is a popular tool used in cybersecurity. NetCat was originally um, built to be used for network troubleshooting, but is often used instead for establishing a reverse shell on a target during penetration testing or hacking. All right, before I show you the code for NetPuppy, I wanna show you this diagram that I created back when I was planning NetPuppy. So if we're assuming that NetPuppy is being used as a reverse shell, then, we, then NetPuppy needs to be present on both computers that are involved. So the assumption is that whoever is using NetPuppy, a cybersecurity professional, is on their host machine over here in the orange and that they're also already on the, the target machine over here. So for NetPuppy to work as a reverse shell, we need to have it downloaded on both machines. Once they're both on here, the cybersecurity professional is going to start NetPuppy on the host machine in listen mode. And they're gonna tell NetPuppy to listen to the any address or whatever address, their local IP address, on port 40, 40, or whatever port they want. So NetPuppy is gonna sit here and listen to this port, attach to this port and wait for an incoming connection. Now on the other machine, the cybersecurity professional is gonna tell NetPuppy to connect back to this IP address of whatever, whatever IP address the offense computer is and that port. So when NetPuppy makes that connection, that's what creates this socket. Oh. <laughs> like this, boom. So now they're both connected across the socket and they can send data back and forth to one another. I wanna point out that I've changed these names up here. Normally this would be called the server and this would be called a client because the server is listening to a port and waiting for a connection. But this got a little confusing for me in the code because once the socket is established, their roles actually change. It's not really the server that's um, serving data to the client, it's actually going to be the client serving data back to the server. Now in the code, the socket is treated as bi-directional, so technically both peers are sending and receiving data, but really the only data that the server is sending is basically questions about what data is over here on the client. So I've changed their names to offense and connect back. So the connect, so the offense is going to be asking the connect back, what data do you have? And connect back is going to be sending that data across the socket. So that's why I changed those names, mostly because it was really confusing to me. <laughs> now that you understand the basic implementation of NetPuppy, I want to show you my actual first diagram from when I was planning it. And that's because it includes this bash subprocess, which is going to be the reverse shell that we establish on the connect back peer. So if you think about it, the way that um, the offense or cybersecurity professional is going to get an exfiltrate data from this connect back target peer is with a bash shell. So they can run commands like who am I from over here. It gets redirected into the standard in of the bash shell. The bash shell runs who am I and then it prints standard error and standard out and that gets redirected back into the socket. Or at least that's the idea. Now I when I first started writing NetPuppy, I started it in Python and I got as far as being able to send simple messages back and forth between peers. But then when it came to writing the bash shell, I had no idea about threading and concurrency and had a really hard time using Python. So I deep dived Python and learned about how it handles threads and decided that I didn't like that didn't like uh, Python's implementation of concurrency. Um, so instead I decided to go with Golang. But we'll talk about that in the next devlog because it's a whole coming of age story for me. 
Before we go though, I do want to show you um, NetPuppy and the basic implementation as far as the Python code goes, just so you can see how it kind of works. So if our top window here is the server or offense host, we're just going to say NetPuppy listen. And as you can see, NetPuppy is listening to the any address on 404044. Um, so then over here, if we're pretending that this is the connect back peer, we're going to say NetPuppy connect, and then we're going to give it our address that we want to connect to, which for now is our local host and the port. And boom, you can see that they're now connected. So from over here, I can send messages back and forth between them, just very simple strings. But like I said, with this Python version, there is not a bash shell being started or handled right now. That'll be the next, that'll be the next devlog. All right, so now that you know about NetPuppy and you've seen a little bit uh, of how it works and what I'm planning for it, I'm gonna call it for this devlog. For the next part, we're gonna talk about Python and Golang. We're gonna talk about threading and how I learned about concurrency and the friends that I made along the way. Uh, but until then, I hope that you enjoyed this first part and I will see you soon for part two. Thanks for hanging out.